they have been around for centuries. They act in the shadows, they are extremely secretive. And they practice ancient rituals. They are controlling the world using money and influence. Secret societies have flourished throughout history. With founding fathers, royals, and leaders among their ranks. Conspiracy theories have surrounded them for years. With rumors of being behind almost every unexplained event in history. Assassination, wars, and revolutions. They inspired the curiosity of the world. But it's important to separate fact from fiction. It's true. Secret societies do exist and have been around since ancient times. But most of the stories that arise about secret societies are wild imaginations. If all we hear was true. There would be no secrets in these secret orders. Here are the real stories behind history's most exclusive secret societies. The Knights Templar were warriors dedicated to protecting Christian pilgrims to the Holy Land during the Crusades. The military order was founded around 1118 when Hugues de Payens, a French knight, created the poor fellow soldiers of Christ in the Temple of Solomon. Or the Knights Templar for short. Headquartered at Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Members pledged to live a life of chastity, obedience and poverty. Templars' meetings were secret affairs, especially the initiations of new members. No knights of the order were allowed to reveal anything about their rules, plans, or affairs to outsiders, under penalty of death. The Knights Templar were known for more than their military prowess and moral lifestyle. They became one of the most wealthy and powerful forces in Europe. After setting up a bank that allowed pilgrims to deposit money in their home countries and withdraw it in the Holy Land. Within the space of only two years, the Templars went from an obscure group of men to a formidable order of 300 monk knights. With a great wealth of gold, silver, and estates. They also owned the island of Cyprus and a fleet of ships. When the Crusades came to an end after the Siege of Acre in 1291, the Knights Templar withdrew to Paris where they focused on their banking endeavors. On October 1307, King Philip IV of France betrayed the Knights Templar. He was massively in debt from fighting the English for years. And most of his obligations was to the Knights Templar, so he began scheming to have his debts to the Templars cancelled and to take their wealth from them. The most valuable of their lands and most of their cash was in France. So he recruited a deserter who was been haunted by the Templars as a witness and made public accusations that the Templars secretly practiced witchcraft, idolatry, and blasphemy. During the initiation ceremony, he had every Templar in France arrested, divested of all their worldly possessions, and exiled out of the country. The Templars were not under the authority of Philip or any king. They answered only and directly to the Pope. Templars could not be legally arrested, punished, or tortured by any ruler. Upon hearing this news, Pope Clement V was furious. He issued a formal protest and demanded the Templars be released immediately. King Philip launched a propaganda campaign against the Knights and against the Pope to win the French people to his side. After strong debates, the Pope saw things Philip's way and agreed to formally dissolve the order and allowed torture to be employed to extract confessions from the Templars. One day the knights had been fated members of an incredibly powerful order. The next, they were helpless prisoners, undergoing severe torture. Dozens of Templars were burned at the stake for their alleged crimes. Clement V pronounced the knights condemned men, and anyone who would give them aid, or even advice, would be subject to arrest, torture, and excommunication. So, the Templars was on the run, and they scattered around Europe. They created a system by which a brother could identify himself through hand signals. They also invented a verbal code phrases for communication. And that's how the concept secret society started. Rumors started to spread that the Knights Templar guarded artifacts like the Holy Grail and Shroud of Turin. And that they secretly use real magic which they learned from mysterious treasure they discovered under the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. Popular books and films like The Da Vinci Code continue to inspire curiosity about the Knights Templar today. The Masons are the largest fraternal organization in the world. Many emperors and kings have been Masons, as well as famous leaders. Such as the founding father of Italy, Giuseppe Garibaldi. 
the 26th president and liberator of Mexico, Benito Juarez. The liberator of South America and the first president of Colombia, Simon Bolivar. The Freemasons also had a big role in American history. 13 of the 39 men who signed the U.S. Constitution were Masons. Founding fathers like George Washington, James Monroe, Benjamin Franklin, and Theodore Roosevelt. The order traced their roots back to the Middle Ages in Europe as a guild of stone masons. At that time most craftsmen were organized into local guilds. Traveling from city to city. The oldest documents of the masons, known as the old charges of masonry, date back to the 14th century. And from the same period and the same locations where the Knights Templar disappeared. England and Scotland. Interesting. Very interesting included are an oath to secrecy about the organization. A vow to never betray another brother. A promise to never have sex with the wife, daughter, mother, or sister of a fellow mason. And an obligation to provide any visiting brother with lodging, food, and work for two weeks. As well as traveling money and directions to the next lodge up the road. The Regius poem, or Halliwell manuscript, is the oldest record of the Freemasons. It was written in the year 1390, but the Masons publicly announced their existence in 1720. By Andrew Michael Ramsey, in France. Soon after that. Pope Clement XII issued a proclamation that forbade any Roman Catholic from joining the Masons. Prompted by concern over Masonic temples and the secret rituals performed within them. In the 19th century, the Vatican even called the Masons the Synagogue of Satan. In the realm of politics, Freemasons inspired America's first political third party. The Anti-Masonic Party, formed in 1828 in response to fears that the group was growing too secretive and powerful. Many of its members touted conspiracy theories about the Freemasons. Today, Freemasonry is not really a secret but a very exclusive group. It's like they had to let everyone know that they were in a secret order. But nobody else was allowed to join. The most recognizable symbol of the Freemasons is the Builder's Square and Compass. With the letter G at its center which remains a subject to dispute, some experts say it represents geometry which was a critical field to the first Freemasons. While others say it it represent God, the grand architect of the universe. The all-seeing eye on the dollar bill is also said to be a Masonic symbol, which origins from the ancient Egyptians. The rituals around becoming a Freemason are shrouded in secrecy, membership is open to all males over the age of 21. And women can join an associated group, known as the Order of the Eastern Star. Rumors say that the Masons were responsible for causing the American Revolution, since most of the founding fathers were members. So the real question is how did an ancient guild of stonemasons become a secret society that is now blamed for masterminding global events? After a long study of facts, rumors, and history books, there is one fact that our team is certain of. That the truth about the Freemasons and the Knight Templars is connected to the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. The most mysterious place on earth. Here's more famous members of the order, which no one would believe they had something in common. Winston Churchill. Mozart, Davy Crockett, Houdini, John Wayne, Buzz Aldrin and Henry Ford. The Order of the Skull and Bones is America's favorite secret society to link to every major event in world history since its founding. Their name is legendary and reaches into the highest levels of American society. In the 2004 U.S. presidential election, both the Democratic and Republican nominees, George Bush and John Kerry were members of Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones is a secret society founded at Yale University that is still going strong today. It was founded in 1832 by William Huntington Russell who was in Germany when secret societies were rising in number and were the trend of the day. Upon his return to America at Yale, he set up the headquarters in the tomb and began gathering special, limited number of members called Bonesmen. The number of members was deliberately kept limited. As each year 15 juniors are chosen by seniors to join the restrictive club during their senior year. They select new members every spring during an event at Yale University called Tap Day. This is when Skull and Bones members go around literally tapping people on the shoulder as an invitation to join the society. 
they go through a very secretive initiation ceremony, which haven't been leaked until today. They were accused of stealing the skulls of famous people like the Apache warrior Geronimo and hiding them somewhere inside the tomb. But Yale University was quick to reply that the tomb is not on university property, so they don't know anything about it. They were also accused of supporting Hitler and involved in the assassination of JFK. A group of men reportedly broke into the tomb and found skulls, black velvet, and candles. Which led to even more rumors of the satanic rites that were assumed to be going on. They started keeping the names of the members secret in the 1970s. Is this true? Hard to say when the limited number of members that are alive are quiet about everything except their membership to the club. The symbol of skull and bones is appropriately a skull with two crossbones. What's less clear is the meaning of the number 322 beneath them. A popular theory say that it represents the year 322 BC when Alexander the Great died. Only presidents. Rich and powerful men and those that have run large companies in America have claimed membership in the Skull and Bones Society. If these men, who hold so much sway over our government, economy, and life as we know it, belong to a society that participates in wild satanic rituals, then there has to be more to the story. Famous Skull and Bones members include Presidents William Howard Taft, George H. W. Bush and his son, George W. Bush, the founder of Time magazine Henry Luce, and John Kerry. We saved the best for last. The Illuminati is one of history's most alluring secret orders. The Illuminati was a secret society formed in Bavaria, which now is a part of modern-day Germany. That existed from 1776 to 1785. Its members originally referred to themselves as Perfecti Violists. The group was inspired by the ideals of the Enlightenment and founded by Professor of Canon Law, Adam Weishaupt. He wanted to promote the education of reason and philanthropy and oppose superstition and religious influence in society. Weishaupt sought to change the way states in Europe were run, removing the influence of religion from government and giving people a new source of illumination. It's believed that the Bavarian Illuminati's first meeting was held in a forest near Ingolstadt on 1 May 1776. Here, five men set out the rules that would govern the secret order. To join the Illuminati, you had to have full consent from the other members, possess wealth, and have a good reputation within a suitable family. There was also a hierarchical system to Illuminati membership. After entering as a novice, you graduated to a minerval and then an illuminated minerval. Although the structure later became more complicated, with 13 degrees of initiation required in order to become a member. By 1782, the Illuminati had grown to around 600 members. These included German nobles such as Baron Adolf von Nieg, who helped shape the group's organization and expansion. The next year there were around 3,000 members. In 1785, the Duke of Bavaria Karl Theodore banned secret societies including the Illuminati and instituted serious punishments for anyone who joined them. During the arrest of suspected Illuminati members, compromising documents defending ideas such as atheism and suicide were found in their possession. As well as instructions for carrying out abortions. Adam Weishaupt was eventually stripped of his post at the University of Ingolstadt. After being exiled from Bavaria, he spent the remainder of his life in Gotha, Thuringia, dying in 1830. This cemented the belief that the group was a threat to both the state and the church. The Illuminati then seems to have disappeared, with some people believing that it continued underground. From the moment they disbanded, conspiracy theories about the Illuminati began to take hold. In 1797, French publicist and Jesuit priest, Augustine Barrel, suggested that the Illuminati had spearheaded the French Revolution. First president of the U.S., George Washington, then wrote a letter the following year in which he stated that he believed the threat of the Illuminati had been avoided. Adding further fuel to the idea that the order still existed. Books and sermons condemning the group later sprung up, and third U.S. president, Thomas Jefferson, was accused of being a member. In 1975, Robert Wilson published a book, The Illuminato's Trilogy, which became a cult success and inspired a new genre of conspiracy fiction, including Dan Brown's novel and subsequent film, Angels and Demons. 
the Illuminati also became connected with Satanism and other ideals that were far removed from those associated with the original 18th century Bavarian group. Many famous pop stars are alleged to be part of the modern day Illuminati. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel for more. Thanks for watching.